This message is intended as a reminder that we are not licensed professionals, not psychiatrists or psychologists. If you have a serious problem, please seek professional help. The National Suicide Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. There's some damsels in the DM Yes, queen <laughs> Tell us what's the vibe uh-huh. what's the vibe? There's some damsels in the DM yeah. 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 Please tell us what's the vibe uh-huh. DMs, DMs, yeah we see them, yeah we read them DMs, DMs, we don't need them, we just leave them Please yeah. It's going down in the DMs, bye Hello and welcome to another episode of Damsels in the DMs. I'm Lauren. I'm Ash. And I'm Alejandro. Hello, how's everyone doing? Life is pretty fucking groovy. If you guys are not watching the YouTube um, channel and just listening to the podcast, I suggest going onto YouTube and looking at Alejandro's makeup because it is very cool. I appreciate it. I mean, I had a really rough time the last time I was trying to prepare my makeup. I felt like a damn clown just like slapping blush <laughs> any old way. So today was a little more, a little time spent on trying to get whatever this is on my face down. But I well, appreciate it. It's funny because the last time I saw Alejandro was at our awards ceremony. And we were so lucky because we won the LGBTQ Voices Award. But <laughs> prior to this award, I had gotten my makeup done for the ceremony. And I sent out pictures of my face to like the group chat always, because you know, every great woman, there's a group chat behind her. So I sent out this picture and they're like, oh wow. Because of like (laughs) how much makeup was on my face. Like there was a mole drawn on, lots of under eyeliner, like lots of under eyeliner. And so my friend is like, get your COVID test and then steal the swab and go to the bathroom and take some off. But anyway, <laughs> I, like, I, show, I show up, I'm like, Alejandro, what do you think? Be honest with me if like I'm wearing too much makeup. He's there and he's like, oh honey, like you ain't seen nothing yet. This <laughs> man has sparkly boots, chain necklaces, looks so, so fire. And I was like, you know what? I'm just living in this man's shadow. Why, why am I worried about my damn mole over here? We were both wearing about the same amount of makeup for sure. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, that is one of my fears. If we ever go to an event together, I do not want to look like a basic bitch standing next to you. Alone. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, no. welcome to my life. <laughs> oh, my God. No. No, but it was also amazing what he was wearing because we're at a networking event, right? So we're like mingle, we're trying to make connections and everybody is stopping this man to compliment his outfit. So (laughs) I'm like, I just need to bring Alejandro with me everywhere because he's a conversation starter. (laughs) It was really cool. It was really, really exciting. And David Artavia, if you're listening, we cannot (laughs) wait to hear back from you. (laughs) Flag to that. (laughs) <laughs> Which brings us to today's episode, everybody. <laughs> this is red flag, green flag, okay? We're going to be talking about the red flags and the green flags of dating, which, you know, another phenomenal reason to tune into today's episode on YouTube. So we're going to get into the conversation, and then if we feel like something is a red flag, we're going to wave our little flags, and if something is a green flag, we're going to wave our little flags. Okay, so to kick it off, what are some memorable green flags when you first start dating somebody? Oh, I have one. You go, girly. When the person you're dating asks you about your love languages, because even just knowing about that, I've never dated anyone who really gives a fuck about love languages. So that was a big green flag moment for me. Totally, totally. I love one of, I think a green flag would be asking about what one is passionate about. And Mm -hmm. like, if you're working toward that constantly, I think that motivation you know, outside of work stuff and all of that, like if the person is willing to like really take time to ask, like, how are you making progress on this thing that you set yourself out to do? That I think is like blaring green flag for me. So I don't have flags. I have donuts with me. So I'm waving up a green donut in this case. I think for me, one would be very simple, but just asking questions. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who does not ask questions, that's a red flag. So I think a green flag is just somebody who's really interested in getting to know you. I love you that you said that because I think that is a very important thing for me too. When I go on dates, I 
I definitely gravitate towards people, even if I'm not really that interested in them, at least like having the conversation flow and just know that, you know, it's not just about them and they're not just like telling stories about themselves. They're like really trying to get to know you and asking a lot of questions like that in friendships too. Like, I love that. Absolutely. I ask too many questions though. Like Brian gets tired of my questions. He'll be like, oh, can question master leave for a second? Like I'm so sick of all these questions. My friend today, I was asking her, she's moving and I was asking her about her place. And she's like, what are you trying to be my realtor? Oh my God. Boy, okay. God. What are some red flag moments then? Besides me trying to ask too many questions, red flag. Always on the phone. Always on the phone. Yeah. That's just like kind of rude as well. But I mean, yeah, I think that's a huge red flag. Because it's like, well, if we're, it goes back to the asking questions. If you're not going to engage in a conversation and if you're going to be like so focused on this object rather than what we're talking about, then <laughs> what are we doing? Like, why are you here? Right. Yeah. Um, no eye contact. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Like you are not engaging with me. You are looking around to see who else is here in this room or you're just, I don't know what is happening with your eyes. So true. But engage with me, look into my eyes and let's have a conversation. My yeah. favorite, all their exes are crazy. Red flag. <laughs> Why are they crazy? What is the common denominator? Hmm. Slash, how do we know that they're crazy? Are they like coming back? Well, Maybe that's the reason. Like if, if you're just if you're on a date with somebody and they're like, oh, like, but my last ex, she was crazy, or the previous ex before that, she was crazy. Like oh. if you can't just say like, oh, my exes were good people, it just didn't work out. Like you blame other people for relationships ending. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Which brings me to my next one. Red flag is when a straight male is too obsessed with their Instagram. Agreed. Yes thousand percent agreed have dated those and do not like those like stop yeah. stop refreshing your notifications page to see how many likes you got exactly. on the pre on this like one post that you watching just everybody who looks at your stories not attractive right yeah. i think we can open that up to like anyone not just straight men because i feel like there's definitely people in the lgbtq plus community that are constantly refreshing or scrolling and to one extent, I understand that like it's a marketing tool. So mm -hmm. on one hand, like certain images or like subject matter might be preferred. But then on the other, it's yeah, it goes back to like if you're going to stay staring at your phone while you're engaging with another person, then like, please just remove yourself and go somewhere else. <laughs> I think people who are too obsessed with looking at stories too, like who's viewing your story. You know, social media is really just we're fucked. As a generation. <laughs> like, uh, dating apps too. I mean, dating apps, social many conversations media. With guests who have shared their experiences and it's, and we have shared ours. It's a trip, but I mean, this is kind of where we're at. Now question, what are red flags that can be ignored or turned into green flags later on? For example, like what are red flags that are acceptable to have to continue to date somebody? Busy schedule, I think that can uh, be taken into account and given a little patience and leeway on. Because, I mean, shit, especially here, it's there's so much movement. Everyone's constantly hustling and moving back and forth that, you know, sometimes a date might have to be rescheduled because of unforeseen circumstances. I'd say that's like a, a gray area one for sure for me. I think having um, different hobbies that are like way too different, you think it might be a red flag or it could be a red flag, but I think it's like a really great way to learn more about each other and just open your horizons to different interests. And it doesn't have to be too much of a red flag as long as it doesn't take away from the time that you're spending with each other. For example, if you are dating someone who is like a huge gamer and stays up till 4 a.m. playing video games, that's a red flag that you should mm. not even try to work with. But if it's someone who loves to play video games on their, you know, downtime, that's not taking time away from your relationship, like actually taking time away from your relationship and it's just their time, then that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and say somebody who just got out of a long relationship. I do not think that that is a red flag because I think if they have been in a long relationship, then that probably means they have a lot of potential to be a good partner. My reason for making it a green flag is because I think that because they have been a long-term partner in the past, they have potential to be one in the future. 
my advice there would just be don't rush it. And if you're into them, like let them take their time to have their little moment of enjoying solitude. But I think that could be a green flag and a red flag turned into a green flag. I like that because I always get scared um, because, you know, when you start when you start dating someone, you ask them when their last relationship was. And I get really nervous when they're like, oh, it was like five months ago and it was like a four or five year long relationship. That freaks me out. But I think it could be a red flag only if you're not clear on what you are looking for Mm -hmm. and they're not clear on what they're looking for, because if they're just looking, they just got out of a relationship, they're just looking to play around they should let that be known before getting into something with someone. Definitely. And I think paying attention to how they talk about whatever happened, it doesn't have to be super detailed, but this goes back to, I think what Lauren was saying earlier, where like, if they show they are able to process things healthfully, Mm -hmm. I think that is definitely a green flag that may have been perceived as a red flag just because of the, you know, long-term relationship question. What about, when there's a red flag that you can't get over and it could be anything even stuff that's very shallow that you feel guilty about but it's just something that you personally can't get over for example a lot of women like tall men so the guy is shorter than you should you try to get over red flags if everything else about them is perfect i mean if it's something physical like shortness is that really a red flag i was gonna ask that too yeah i don't know well, but I'm just saying if it's like a personal red flag to you. Oh. Mm-hmm. So I have dated people and I have ignored red flags, hoping that I can change it. But what I've learned is that you are never going to be able to change a red flag. They're going to change it if they want to and only if they want to. So that's right. There's, I just think there's no hope in trying to like keep dating someone who has a red flag that really it's a red flag that really does matter to you I think there's no hope to try to change them because nine and a half out of ten times it's not gonna work we can't change people so you're saying that if something is bothering you from the beginning and like you can't get over it then you should cut it off there yeah I think there's no point chasing it or or no point hoping that it's gonna change because it's most of most of the time it's not gonna change you can try, but in my experience, red flags, especially the ones that like really do matter to me are not going to go away. Okay. Yeah. I like that. For our listeners who are in the dating game, I think that it could be a really fun idea to do a rapid fire, red flag, green flag. We're going to throw out some ideas. Our hosts are going to respond to them with whether they think it's a red flag or a green flag. And, you know, maybe there's going to be some interesting conversation here. I will stop the game if I think that I need the host to elaborate on something. Are you ready, damsels? We are ready. We're ready. Let's do it. Wait, to clarify, this is my green flag. This is my red flag. You go, girly. Thank you. We got to tell the listeners what this is. They don't know. Listeners, I have a green book for a green flag and a red book for a red flag. They're they're themed. They are. Also, it's Christmas. This could be like, oh my God, Merry Christmas early, everybody. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Feliz Navidad. Okay. Post pictures with themselves and giant fish. (laughs) Red flag. Disgusting. Ew. Bad. No. Where are they posting pictures, though? On a dating app. On a dating app. Or on their Instagram. Swipe away. Okay. Next question. Um, still on hinge after the third date. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say um red. Yeah, controversy, <laughs> controversy. Tell Love us it. How you differ. War. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess for me, like I'm a hopeless romantic. So if I were in that situation and like if I was feeling good after like date number three, I think if I had hinge on my phone or scruff or grind or whatever, I think, yeah, if I was feeling good about it, I would take it off and just like focus my attention. But then I don't know, maybe not a lot of people think that way. <laughs> yeah. That, I actually, that is really sweet because I do love a hopeless romantic. A green flag, so don't change but it. But yes, no, I stand by my <laughs> green flag because in my opinion, if, I was dating someone and we went on three, only three dates and we didn't take his profile down. I would be like, okay, great. Love that. Because it's only been three dates. If he did take it down, that would be a red flag. Cause I would be like, 
are you a stalker or do you not like me? Like, did you disappear from the app? Like, you know, like what is happening? Like, do you, are you back with your girlfriend? Like, I need clarification as to why you're off the app. Oh. So I could go either way, but stay on the app until we decide together to get off of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Red flag, green flag. Hasn't read a book since high school. Oh. Ew. Red, red flag, Blair. Ugh, bye. Red no. flag. Oh my Wait. gosh. Doesn't text you back within five days. Five days? Are you serious? Are you That's dead? Flag. Did you oh, die? <laughs> Did you throw your phone in the ocean? Like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god no way somebody did ghost me and after two weeks they came back and texted me i was like wow i thought you threw your phone into the ocean or you <laughs> died i was like i'm so happy that you're actually alive i said that <laughs> <laughs> damn okay. has a podcast green flag Woo! Oh, we got a green, green flag, flag. <laughs> okay picks a restaurant that everybody goes to for your first date Mm. is it good if it's good then green flag everybody goes there that's all i'm saying i mean well, then that means it's good i said so. what i said <laughs> fine because now i'm trying to date a king and a prince not a peasant <gasps> doesn't want any basic oh shit my goodness yes but like before <laughs> take me to takai or a sweet green you know what i mean or air one but now like find something that nobody knows of okay doesn't work out uh, that's a red flag, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't need you to, okay, because I'm maturing now, I'm almost 30. I don't need you to have a six pack and like, man, you know, abs of steel, but like at least take care of your health. And part of taking care of your health physically and mentally is working out. Not only that, nutrition too, like mm -hmm. taking care of what is being put inside the body. I think that's amazing and should be taken care of like at all times. Thousand percent. Yeah. Doesn't believe in therapy. Ugh, red flag. Bye. We do not want you. We do not believe in you. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> cat. So I have mixed feelings about this. Red flag and green flag. Because ever since I came back from Greece, I have been loving cats. And I feel like I want one for myself. But I'm still very much like I hate cats right now. So I don't know. But if I... If, mm, mm, I just... Something about cats in general are kind of gross. So I'm going to go for a red flag. Oh, yeah, this is difficult. I don't want to discriminate against the cat lovers, but I, as a personal choice, I don't know if I'd be able to withstand the cat hair and the pot. I mean, my eyes get itchy. I'm like already like starting to scratch my eyes. Like, Me too. I, uh, doesn't like dogs. Oh. What? Red flag. Red flag. Uh, my people. <laughs> um, has never left the country. Hmm. I don't it's, think that's a red flag at all because yeah. you know, sometimes due to many different Absolutely. circumstances, a person might not be able to travel. So uh, I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's a red flag or a green flag. I think if, if that person like didn't like any other country other than America and are very America, 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 then that's oh. a red flag. But if this someone, if this person can't like physically leave the country because of financial reasons or health reasons, then that's not a red flag for me. Shops at Hot Topic. Ew. Red flag. I mean, <laughs> I would say red flag, but I also want to know what they're shopping for. Because if it's for themselves or for somebody else, I think that could change it, you know? Yeah. For themselves. <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Not for Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, well. That, How old are we? Flag. That's a red flag, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't just Green flag, okay. <laughs> Drink <laughs> water. Lauren's like asking for a friend. <laughs> friend. <laughs> Drinks a lot. Uh, yeah, that's red a flag red for flag. me. Yeah. Mm. Like I love being social. You know, go out on the weekends, go and drink. But I've been there, done that in college. But now I'm trying to date someone my age or older, and I just want someone who is not a party goer rager type person in work circumstances i get that sometimes mm -hmm. it is part of the experience where it's just like oh everyone's casually having a drink da, da, da. but like going hard and going often on the drinking like that's i think a red flag for sure yeah lots of photos with their mom and sister 
Aww. I think it could be sweet. So I'm going to do a green flag because I haven't done a green flag in a while. <laughs> but don't be weird, you know? Yeah. The Yeah. I mean, the didn't you say a lot? How, was there an adjective about the quantity of images? This is a rapid fire that's going really slow. So <laughs> I don't <get> any <laughs> <laughs> we're pulling a Lauren and we like to ask a lot of questions that's right, right. Yeah. we need to ask these questions <laughs> Laura, Laura, I green flag. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay last one doesn't like the holidays <sighs> that's tough because there might be some things that have happened that affect a person's attitude toward a specific holiday so you know, I feel like sensitivity around that is necessary. But if it's like total Grinch situation, then come on, like, that's not fair. <laughs> Red flag, because I love the holidays, okay? <laughs> love hot chocolate, love a Christmas tree, love snow and lights and Hanukkah. And cookies, how can we forget cookies? And cookies. I love cookies. Oh my God, obsessed. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for attending our rapid fire. We will now move to the letter portion of today's episode. If you enjoyed hearing our uh, red flag, green flag, let us know and we will do it again. Yes. So we have, dear damsels, have you ever hyped up the green flags so much in the person you're dating in an effort to outweigh how heavy the red flags are? Small things like boundaries seem completely thrown out the window with this person I'm dating. Don't want to gender my partner out of respect. And there's always an excuse or question as an answer. Like, oh, I was so drunk. What would you want me to do? It's only been a few social settings. We've met up for a let's get to know each other in a group sort of date. So I'm wondering whether I need to dip or dive deep into discovering sooner than later. I just can't get over small signs of them not being willing to communicate or flat out not remember details in a story that would totally seem easy to remember. Still, there are moments we share that remind me of how much I admire their strength of character. Ugh, just using that phrase makes me feel like I'm putting more effort into justifying what I know I shouldn't stand for. Am I playing myself by holding on to something that already feels like a shit show of communication? With open arms for feedback, red flag, green flag. You got a lot right. going on, girly. There's a ton going on there. <laughs> mm, there is a lot going on. But I'm going to say, I have done this a lot of times where I have just pushed for the green flags and swept away the red flags. And I do that. And, you know, I don't know if that's ever going to change because I like to see the best in everyone. But that kind of just always bites me in the butt because the red flags are always going to outweigh the green flags. So I think you need to have an honest conversation with this person and let them know how you feel and what's bothering you. And if this is a matter that he or she or they cannot are not willing to change about themselves, then best to move on. Totally. I think, especially with these group setting sort of dates, uh, I'm just curious if there has been like an actual, like one on one scenario where they've been able to like really understand each other, learn about each other, whatever. Because, you know, I, I feel like if there was a one on one date, that would be the perfect opportunity to do exactly what you were just talking about, Ash, having that open and honest conversation and just getting it out there, talking about these red flags that might be concerning. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the other person might not know or may never have had someone help them become aware of certain things that might be bothersome. But constantly blaming it on I was so drunk, that's a little, that kind of goes back to what we were just talking about before, which is like, I mean, a lot of drinking is a huge red flag that should definitely be addressed, like, at a certain point. But if it's already, if he's already showing his colors so soon, then it's like, okay, well, how much should you really be patient with? You know what the red flag in this really was for me was the lack of accountability and the excuses. Like I was so drunk or what would you want me to do? Because I really believe in being accountable for your actions. Like if you screw something up, if you miss a deadline, if you like do something, just be like, I'm sorry. Like I had a lot going on. I'm sorry. I dropped the ball. Like just being able to admit that you 
did something to screw up, I feel like says a lot about you as a person and that you're empathetic and have respect for other people that you're not going to be defensive about your actions. Um, I think making excuses for behavior that you know is wrong is like a huge red flag. And I really respect when people can just own up to their actions. I think even in cancel culture, we see that all the time. Like people who are able to survive cancel culture are the people who own up to what they did and work to figure that out for themselves and work to remedy whatever they did. They're not the people who deny everything or say that they had absolutely no fault in what they did. So to me, that's why this person is a red flag in general. They're just a red flag because they're not willing to be accountable. And the fact that you're doing all of these, like get to know each other in a group setting, then you're not really getting to know them Mm one-on-one. And if they did really like you, I think then they would have made the time to see you in a one-on-one setting or at least been accountable for what they were doing to bother you. And also like, it seems like you haven't been dating this person for a while at all because not having any one-on-one time with them and they're already you know hitting you with I was so drunk or what do you want me to do like that is such a red flag but if that's happening now then you don't know what's gonna come you know down the road yeah and you know when you're anxious and you just like talk so much about it like you just Uh, like ramble on about all of the different questions and the scenarios that it could have been. That's kind of what this letter feels like to me. Like they're exploring every way that this could be okay because it's coming from like an anxious, insecure place. Meaning that to me, you don't feel safe in this relationship. Like this person isn't comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe in comfort people. And if you can't be comfortable in the person that you're romantically involved with, then I think that's a red flag. Well, everybody, this has been a red flag, green flag episode. We have to announce that we are going to be doing our holiday giveaway soon. So please stay tuned on our Instagram for the ways that you can enter and uh, hopefully get to win some really cool prizes. Some amazing prizes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going to try a new thing out, which is very exciting. We're going to be going live on Twitch starting our Wine Wednesdays. And this is gonna be happening one Wednesday every month and we're gonna just be shooting the shit. So join us on Twitch. We will send you all the details and I'm so excited. Kick it with us, get your wine, get your listening ears on, even watch with us. Hello, we're gonna be visible this time. So gonna be visible. Check us out. A lot of exciting things coming for the damsel. So stay tuned and stick with us. It's been another episode of Damsels in the DMs. Until next time. It's going down in the DMs. Bye. DMs, DMs, we don't need them. We just leave them. Please. Yeah. It's going down in the DMs. Bye.